Okay, so welcome to you wherever you are in the world. Uh, so good morning or afternoon, whichever whichever applies. Um, we're taking the usual webinar format today, so I'll talk for um, about 30 minutes and I'll take questions at the end. So if you have any questions you want to ask, uh, please submit them in the questions window at the side of the GoToWebinar and we'll uh, address as many of those as we can uh, at the end. So I'm in Firth and I'm the VP of Products for Speechmatics. Um, I've been working in the voice space for about four years or so now and it's been a really exciting journey with Speechmatics. The technology is being used widely and is being adopted across many industries for a wide number of use cases and technologies and it's become a significant part of many companies as part of their digital business transformation. We support those businesses in utilizing speech technology in the language they want, through the deployments they want, and um, the way they want, making it work for them in the real world. So at Speechmatics, we perhaps think about um, things a little bit differently than some other speech providers. We like to, to be a forward thinking uh, company, not just about the product and how it might be applied to businesses now and in the future, but also about how we can make it really great without requiring huge investment from companies wanting to gain the value. Traditionally, speech recognition, like most machine learning and big data uh, companies, can rely on huge amounts of data labeling to achieve those real world results. And this is great in the short term, maybe the medium term, but as we reach the next plateau, it gets harder and harder to get improvements from that sort of data alone. And the data needs to be more and more representative of the precise use case to get to those really, really, really high accuracies. And this thing starts to bring the data problem into the customer's scope. So to get to the next big step of improvement, either our customers and partners are going to have to invest in large amounts of time to get data and potentially money and labeling that data, or we need to find better or more imaginative ways to sort of meet those objectives. And Speechmatics is delivering excellent speech recognition now, but we're also investing energy into a journey that will enable that next step change. And if that's to occur, we need to plan that technology now. So today, we're going to talk through some of the ways that the technology is being adopted now, the strategic challenges uh, that are being solved, and some early details of where that speech future might take this. Uh, and not from a totally fanciful point of view, but from a standpoint that we believe is realistic and can bring great advances. Uh, one thing's for sure, I guess, uh, I don't see this journey getting any less exciting anytime soon. So, I mentioned earlier that there are many use cases across many industries. Well, here's just a snapshot of some of those. So, within the media and broadcast space, this technology is being used for everything from captioning live videos, optimizing editing workflows, offline captioning, searching and locating content as part of both asset management functions and for monitoring functions. Within the compliance and discovery space, it's being used to assist in locating content from vast archives of audio data, identifying toxic content, supporting quality of audio communication and training, identification of things like pressure selling and other malpractices, and really sort of ensuring that data is stored in appropriate places to conform to GDPR, for example. Uh, in the communication space, it's being used to caption meetings, transcribing recordings and actions from meetings and interviews. Um, and expanding to supporting identifying sentiment and emotion from audio and transcripts and identifying speakers automatically. And then in the customer experience and analytics space, it's supporting agents and supervisors to ensure that they are efficient and using their skills to the right purposes. Now offloading some of the manual tasks like documenting conversations while supporting QA, consistency and things like that for all conversations. The overall need is similar in these markets, but the speech types, accents and domains and accuracy can be different. This is why Speechmatic spends a great deal of time making sure that the models we have support what we call any context models, making sure that we can support use cases that are noisy, conversational, or with prepared speech, or a single speaker, or multiple speakers, or accents, supporting terminology uh, usage. None of these challenges should be overlooked, but we certainly see these as our problem, not a customer's problem. So supporting multi-accented models, for example, provide support for global conversations, and do not rely on customers having to choose American English or British English, for example. Even this is the first step in providing a service customers can use without requiring them to provide data and become data experts themselves, um, and need to engage in professional service arrangements and things like that to meet their needs. Speech recognition really isn't just about accuracy. Sure, accuracy is important, um, but it's just one of 
several areas that are important. So that core accuracy need, does need to be aligned with use cases, industries and domains, um, the things we just talked about. But also, there's a huge importance in flexibility of deployment, being able to use public cloud, private cloud, integrate into solutions either on premise um, or not, use single high scalable solutions or distributed multi-deployment um, scenarios like using virtual appliances or on-device uh, uh, mechanisms. And then language coverage. This is not just about whether we support English and French, but also the dialects and the accents and the terminology that's used in that language is also a big area to think about. So these three areas really need to be considered when we talk about the value of voice. And they will be aspects that will be coming throughout this webinar to help understand the challenges and practices now and how in future things might change around them. So let's talk about pure word accuracy itself first. The industry uses a mechanism to measure the accuracy of words called word error rate, which is abbreviated to WER or WER. The higher this number, the more the mistakes have been made in relation to some reference text that provided. And that's as simple as it is. Uh, and this slide here just shows some independent testing that shows some of the results we've had recently, which happily shows Speechmatic's doing really well in English and French and Dutch. Um, we do do lots of other languages as well. I think we have more than 30 different languages uh, now that we support. This word error rate is the baseline metrics for performance testing. Um, these results you're seeing here, I think, are from a media and broadcast customer, so not necessarily representative across all use cases, but certainly representative of that market. Word error rate is consistently improving, and we are adding more and more labeled data all the time and improving the algorithms that surround that data. Um, but these gains are beginning to diminish from just doing this. There are still gains across accents and noise and multi speakers to be had. But long term, that is not going to bring the next step challenge. It is great and it is good enough for integration into large enterprise stacks and for many applications that we've talked about earlier. Although I think actually now should really start to be replaced with the word understanding. Measuring these word errors is like saying, you know, the best car in the world is the one that's measured by uh, going the fastest. But what happens when you get to a corner? You need to start thinking about the ability to steer. So suspension and traction all become important aspects in maintaining that speed. Well, automatic speech recognition is exactly the same. Word accuracy is one thing, but without delivering understanding, then it won't deliver the value when you, and agility you need when you get around that corner. This means things like punctuation, sentiment, disfluences, audio type, language ID, speaker ID, diarization, timings, the list goes on. These are all important as they are aspects of that understanding. It's much harder to measure those things than it is to just apply some mathematical formula to the words and get a number that we talked about earlier. Um, so that number is going to diminish in importance overall as everybody gets to that same level, but the understanding um, is where the true value exists. If you just take punctuation, for example, and think about that famous book, Eats, Shoots and Leaves, you'll see that the word error means nothing in terms of understanding without the punctuation. Uh, this applies to all the other metadata aspects we just mentioned too. So to truly understand the voice, you need to value more than just the words. And as the future progresses, more of this understanding will be included in the voice arena, not by pulling together many different solutions, but in one central real world model that considers more than just the words, may well start to use things like images, video, and other textual content surrounding the, the scenarios to help provide multimodal understanding and get to the next level. So, this is where the sort of solution separates from the technology. The speech technology stack will continue to evolve to provide all the metadata needed to build this understanding. How this is interpreted is going to be different for every use case that it's being applied to. The important part here is that the speech platform provides all these attributes in a way that supports the value of these solutions. The full value of these solutions cannot be gained without high quality understanding being delivered from that speech platform. And this is where those other attributes come in importance too. So the ability to deliver in a manner appropriate for the use cases. Um, so it begins to improve in, in, include that flexibility and the languages that we mentioned earlier. So if we think about flexibility, today you can get speech recognition from the public cloud and that's great. But there is more to a voice strategy than just a single speech service. There are a growing number of speech systems, some are domain specific, for example, focused on meeting transcription. Some are deployment specific, i.e. they only work on a, on a phone. Um, some do speech recognition, others do natural language, some do a combination. 
And as voice becomes more prominent, you don't really want a point solution for speech recognition in IVR and one for agent notes in the call center and one for your meeting technology and one for your chatbot. So where do you, where you need different tech providers for different stages, like ASR versus that nat natural language intent detection? Do you want to manage multiple assets for languages and lexicons? Then there are aspects of privacy and compute use, private cloud, public cloud, phone, desktop, flexibility, about performance, operation point, model size, speed accuracy, it's all going to matter. So there's a very important area to, to think about. Language kind of goes hand in hand with accuracy and it starts to encompass use case to help with things like technical terms, places, numbers, multiple speakers, etc. Uh, in some domains, language changes fast. For example, in social media, slang is invented almost daily and in business perhaps slower, but terms like Brexit or COVID still appear regularly. Um, and today, the technology is what a stage I would call regular update stage, where the base language gets updated periodically. And there are tools like custom dictionaries to help company, companies manage the transitions between these, these updates, um, as well as provide general uplift. And this is because the training process for these systems can be complex in gathering, preparing and using data. And it can cause quite a long latency between wanting an update and actually achieving and, and delivering it. Um, this is going to get better. Um, but probably not through just gathering more and more and more labeled data. That won't fix the latency, latency or the ability to improve for many use cases where accessing data is difficult and getting the data labeled is expensive and tough. So as the future progresses, there are mechanisms that are becoming possible that reduce the amount of labeled data needed to train and make much more of a continuous learning and improvement rather than that in periodic improvement that I just talked about. This is gonna to head towards reducing the latency and improving the accuracy generically for the use cases and specific needs. And I hope this will enable customers to move from doing uh, machine learning to what I've called machine training. It's sort of comparable to being able, moving from being a student to being the university. Knowing how to train is much more powerful than just being the student itself. So what all this technology is really enabling and where, is the, where, where the power comes in is supporting the business transformation that is brought by workflow automation. The automation is different in different markets, but the driving factors for success here are the underpinning accuracy and understanding that is provided by the speech engine. We believe that we need to provide the core products that enable solutions from, from value added service providers to enable them to take the voice and apply it as required for their need to up level their value. There are some amazing solutions to business problems, but without the excellence at the core, they will not be able to deliver the full potential. So let's just talk through a bit more using a few partner examples on the way to explain a bit better and see where the value is today and where that can go moving forwards. So voice technology and workflow automation is not about all about recognizing humans. Uh, with computers and offloading questions to voice assistants and chatbots. It's about making human interactions better. So this includes scenarios where the humans are in the loop. This covers many use cases, such as adding subtitles to videos automatically to enable them to be consumed easier, or meeting note taking, or call analytics. And analysts believe this process automation will be the number one use case for uh, AI uh, for some time to come. And this is starting to enable hyper automation, which is the core of a digital transformation story. Hyper-automation being the process of automating anything that, that can be and not leaving anything behind. So this is applicable to many use cases and it supports transformations like the ability to automatically segment video and audio feeds, identifying speaker segments and captioning, identifying valuable content and supporting production workflows in the media sector. It enables things like IVR to become voice-enabled chatbots or digital assistants, enabling powerful customer experience management. It does things like automate the note taking for CRM and call history and for meetings, in fact, in general, to support human to human communication, automating meetings and post meeting workflow. Um, and it supports things like automatic detection of risk within audio, detecting compliance statements and the like. At this point, workflows become seamless. The computer and human elements merge, reducing overheads and increasing throughput and value delivery. Accurate speech recognition forms the bond here technically between the speakers and the technology. So although speech to text is not the only technology needed here, it forms the foundation, the interface, and the communication paths. Uh, put simply, if you don't understand the customer asked, you can't action it through any of these mechanisms. So 
Daisy are a great example of one of our partners using this technology in this space. Uh, they are a leading provider of speech analytics software, uh, and they enable businesses to understand and focus on customer calls that matter through speech and sentiment analysis software that they call uh, Lisa. Lisa provides speech and sentiment analytics. Uh, it provides risk and quality management. The software enables businesses to understand the intent, context, and empathy of a conversation, quickly identifying compliance issues and mitigating any risk at scale. The volume of voice data within content centers is absolutely massive. A transcribing voice into text format is the first step and baseline to understanding that content and the context of those conversations. Uh, lists of context, uh, uh, sorry, context centers can transform voice um, and gain new and valuable insights to reduce the risk of regulation and compliance breaches and Lissa really helps with that. Businesses can improve process efficiency, streamline workflows, reduce customer churn, deliver better customer experiences, and ultimately reduce costs and protect their brand. So using speech, the application provides accurate transcription functionality at scale for large volumes of voice data, regardless of dialect, accent, or location. So working across a global market makes accent support very important. And they benchmarked um, across many accents, finding great results, especially in noisy uh, contact center environments. So how will the things that I talked about earlier make this even more powerful? Well, often in this space, data is private as part of the contract between the customer and the company where the conversation is being held. This means that traditionally, it is hard to get to that next step of accuracy of transcription and understanding as training can only be undertaken using similar data, which is also challenging to obtain, or simulated data. And as we step towards the future, I believe we'll be able to incorporate learnings from this data without the need for, for, that, for that problem, to share the data beyond the company boundaries, enabling biasing of already high quality models to the distinct needs of a customer and providing something that heads towards and maybe exceeds the better than human levels that might otherwise not be available. So a little bit further out, maybe in the next two years, the expectation is that companies are really going to be start relying on artificial intelligence to make and support decision making. So there is expected to be a really significant trend towards using AI for the likes of risk reduction, brand protection, uh, etc. You know, but why wait those two years? There's plenty that you can do uh, to start on that path right now. Um, a partner we have in this space is uh, Soho Squared. They are a risk mitigation company and they have a product called Speech Squared, uh, which is a solution designed to take the latest in speech recognition and machine learning and uh, derive uh, the right analysis from the content. This provides companies in legal, compliance, and contact center markets the invaluable ability to analyze voice data from calls. And Speech Square brings high level of flexibility to data analysis for real time or pre recorded voice, um, supporting high volume, mission critical, accurate speech recognition. Uh, the solution really delivers the ability to derive insight from voice data and also manage risk and can be deployed in customer managed environments to enable control of the personal or sensitive data. Uh, so as part of this product, Speechmatics transcribes the voice data into accurate contextual understanding for analysis. And Speech Squared allows the business to identify and address the risks, as well as pinpointing missing sales opportunities, along with they being able to identify cases of fraud, for example. The legal industry can identify risks with the data and it can support event reconstruction workflows. So clearly, Language and deployment flexibility to support security here is very important for these solutions, which is fantastic. But the understanding is going to be really important. Insight from pure words can be very misleading. If you think back to that eat, shoots and leaves comment I made earlier. But understanding pauses, disfluences, and uh, leading on to things like speaker identification and language detection, and disambiguation techniques based on other contexts like location or images. Again, a lot of this might need learning from local data, so supporting mechanisms that are lightweight and enable learnings from local content will be important. This relates back to machine training rather than machine learning, as I said a bit earlier, and the need for this in conjunction with operating in a secure environment is a challenge that must be solved. The ability to continually bias, adapt, and teach future models from current learnings is going to be important here in that journey to improve the power of these solutions. Okay, so moving on slightly to talk about the beginning of human augmentation. Uh, we read a lot about virtual reality and augmented reality, and maybe that conjures up images of robots and fantasy, 
uh, but it's not really as far away as you might think. Um, human augmentation is already being used in the voice world. And as far as I'm aware, we haven't assimilated anyone into the Borg yet. <laughs> Sorry for a Star Trek reference. Um, if you're not familiar with Star Trek, I'll leave you to work out <laughs> what that meant. So let's talk a little bit what we mean about human augmentation by uh, human augmentation. It's all about empowerment of everybody and enhancing human abilities through technology. So it supports a distributed workforce, making sure people have access to the right information at the fingertips, wherever they are. And right now, this is very relevant. I mean, we've all shifted to working from home and it might stay that way for quite a while. Supporting people in their workflows without access to the same environment they've been used to is really important. Keeping people trained and prepared for information that is changing by the minute is also really tough. And when that workforce is remote, it's even harder. So making sure that information is relayed to people consistently when people are distributed is really important. Customers still want answers. They want them first time and they want them to be the right answers. We still have to meet that need. So augmenting humans providing, by providing them with proactive insights based on the real-time conversation that's in progress right now can support these workflows and turn great people into effectively superheroes. Supporting the brand, getting great customer support scores and really getting the best insights possible for the business. And this can be seen in action, particularly right now in call center applications where a wide knowledge is needed to resolve uh, issues. Presenting the right information to the agents based on the conversation continuously enables the agents to focus on the customer and deliver the right messages, regardless of how recently the advice was updated. Uh, call centers are being asked, uh, agents are being asked to deal with more and more um, conversations that cover more and more diverse topics, um, and training is becoming very hard for that. Uh, so how can the technology really help here? Well, this is really part of the continuous intelligence space where real-time and near real-time systems are understanding conversations being held and offering help. This can be in the form of tracking workflow to help make sure the conversations are helpful but efficient and containing all the right information to be compliant with regulation, but also with business standards to support the brand, for example. It can also help in the detailed information by linking to the reams of information that is out there um, in the form of knowledge bases to automatically provide assistance. So supporting these agents in real time as they need to answer questions about pricing, competition, product specifics that they can't possibly remember all the details of. These things can really turn every context agent into that hoop superhero that I mentioned, being able to answer quickly, accurately, efficiently, and support the confidence that customers have in the, both the company and their brand. And there is another aspect here too, and that is the supervision and agent support. This continuous intelligence can also help supervisors operate and support the contact center employees by getting a much better view of what's going on, helping understand not just where they need direct help in a call that is perhaps in progress, but also understanding the metrics of operation by getting a complete picture and not something based on a few small samples of interactions that have occurred. Uh, something else that is really, really hard to apply to a remote workforce. So where does that future take us now uh, from this point? Well, this ability to perform recognition and lookup actions in real time is quite a new, um, new situation to be in. So it's still improving fast in regards to its speed performance. Again, the more metadata that can be provided about the context and the way things are being spoken, the better. Um, uh, so we will get all of these features, but they need to be included within the right latency model. And that's still a challenge, getting all the information at the speed is needed. So there's an important aspect to tackle here. Um, Conversational search and indexing will also be very important for more and more use cases as, uh, such as workflows in meetings, interviews and broadcasts to get more immediate access, more immediate access to targeted information, uh, doing activities to get results directly in flow rather than having to take issues offline and return to them later, which is much, much more inefficient for everybody. Uh, perhaps it'll help everyone feel more productive wherever they are. Uh, within a transaction if it can conclude first time and uh, this will really conclude uh, really contribute to that so again there is a speech magic partner engaged in this uh, agent assist is an integral part of the puzzle customer service platform which uses artificial intelligence and machine learning technology to gather relevant information from uh, all the customer queries that have happened in the past as well as ongoing customer requests the automatic collection of information and data really gives agent that complete view of the customer journey when an agent is faced with resolving a query. 
These insights are at the agent's fingertips, enabling them to resolve inquiries more efficiently whilst keeping the customer satisfied. A great deal of information is locked in the voice data from these recorded calls. To create a full customer interaction history, it is essential to transcribe voice and enable information to be gathered and insight created. Agent Assist utilizes that Speechmatics technology to power that transcription and deliver actionable insights and streamline workflows within those contact centers. Uh, understanding that history of customer interactions to drive insight drastically improves the customer experience and customer satisfaction. Utilizing automation technology has an impact on employee engagement and ultimately on the bottom line. And having transcription at the core of this platform really enables the creation of a complete view of all those customer interactions with the contact center and enables unlocking of that huge amount of voice data that's there. So transparency and traceability is going to become more and more important as systems start to support human augmentation and decision making. The speech to text technology can really help partner customers ensure that this is possible, whether it's keeping that 360 degree view of customer interactions or detecting issues immediately so they can be actioned and not, and not forgotten. There are several factors here that are important. Real-time data is needed. It is much easier to see the correlation between an event and an action if there's less time between them. And it's immediate, then if it's immediate, then there's really, really obvious uh, connections and a huge advantage. So this real-time or near real-time transcription plays an important part in that continuous intelligence that's needed for that human augmentation. COVID has also changed the way we operate. Uh, and probably forever. The importance of being transparent and traceable has had a spotlight on it. There is a need to change the way we use workflows and use automated technologies to support not just the fast pace of information change, but scale with the dynamic of the workforce as restrictions change, as people become unwell or unable to operate, um, and the impacts of sudden increased load on places like call centers where help and support is needed to many, many people. I think we've all seen a slowdown in the response time from these call centers, and there have been some real challenges in prioritizing vulnerable people, as everyone wants to understand what's happening with deliveries and holiday cancellations and flights and hotel reservations. Scaling is hard, especially when it's as dynamic as this. Automation and human augmentation, augmentation are both ways of supporting these situations, allowing the simple queries to be dealt with automatically and the agents to deal with those complex interactions. Within the contact center, understanding who said what, when is very important. Making sure these facts are accurate can be the difference between making the right choices and losing a customer, especially when it comes to dispute resolution. Using speech recognition to record conversations, to be able to automate the understanding of the flow of a conversation, and retrospectively understand what was done for quality assurance is one thing, but to be able to be proactive and stop an error in the first place is way more powerful. Having a system that can see what's going on in near real time, look at previous elements and attributes, and make sure the right choices are made immediately can reduce the number and length of calls and ultimately result in a happier customer through better customer experience. All of that is a win-win situation that should result in repeat business and reduced churn. So the speech recognition paired with other automated uh, technology can really transform this side of the business. Any technology that is built on AI or machine learning is under scrutiny to make sure it's trustworthy. But this doesn't just apply to the pure technology. There are solutions built on this technology that are supporting businesses with the same problem. And to do this, we need to consider ethics, openness, accountability, competence, uh, consistency. There are roles for technology, people, and the combination of both needed to get the right balance of health and support whilst maintaining those five pillars of trust. It cannot all be about the technology. It needs to be thought of as a whole. Quite a bit of the conversation today has been around these aspects. So I'm not going to go back into the detail of all those, but there is still a journey to go on um, as to what we can expect to happen here and how we will support the ability to improve and grow in this respect. Speechmatics already provides support for operating speech technology in models that enable data to be carefully managed, maintaining security boundaries and keeping data on premises and in customers' own domains, which is a great example of a way of helping this. This will extend to the edge, enabling voice data to remain in the end user's hands for some cases. And there is probably the need to operate in hybrid models to support these uh, different cases. If we operate in multiple places, we may well need shared, model, shared models to ensure that the technology works everywhere as expected. Then there are some issues around how the technology can improve. The data remains private. Without a machine learning company seeing data, how can they deliver continued accuracy needed for all these domains? 
there is a lot of work going on here to enable learning from data in federated ways that support privacy and accuracy. And this will bring the next level of controls for businesses wanting to use the technology and conform to growing legislation that we probably will see coming over the years around increased data security and management and ownership of that data. Somewhere that those pillars of trust that I talked about are really being put to the test is in our Liquid Voice platform. So this is another one of our partners uh, that derive insight from voice data that can protect vulnerable customers and minimize GDPR related risk for companies. This is particularly relevant in the finan financial service industry where the FCA recently stipulated that firms have a continuous view on how their customers are being treated in all interactions. So accurate transcripts can be der derived from noisy call environments and across all file formats which enables Liquid Voice to provide a complete searchable archive for use in a range of scenarios which include things like dispute resolution, quality management and event uh, reconstruction. This consolidated reporting and management function provides contact center staff with full visibility and control over every customer interaction and will ultimately reduce fines for businesses and protect vulnerable customers. Okay, so we've reached the end of the story for today and I hope you can see that we're already at a point where Speechmatics and voice technology can solve and support many solutions, all of which help optimize business, making workflows faster, more efficient and valuable to all parties. Some through offloading work from humans to automated mechanisms and others through supporting people to help them become more amazing at their jobs. Scaling businesses is hard, especially ones that need people to interact. This technology can really help with growth and scale in the best ways, delivering better experiences on the way for both the customers and the employees alike. This is a trend that is not going away and voice will continue to be an important part of this across an increased marketplace. This technology still has a lot to offer and businesses are increasingly looking at ways to use this core technology to add understanding and value to services they provide now and ways that they can add more value in the years to come. And I really look forward to supporting those businesses uh, through that journey. Cool, so we are at the point of uh, questions. So if you just give me a uh, second or two, I will uh, read some of these questions and see if we can get some answered. So there's a question here that says, uh, accuracy is essential for timing and effective voice transcription. How will re you reduce the need to edit and correct automatic transcripts in future? Uh, it's a pretty good question. Uh, so automatic speech recognition is never going to be perfect, right? People aren't going to be perfect either. Um, when you transcribe a conversation yourself, you're using a great deal of context that's just not available to the machine or to another person if you are uh, outsourcing it to a company, for example some understanding of the subject or the people involved or whether people are located or the terminology or the spelling of their names is essential to get to that absolute perfection. Um, speech, speech recognition is getting more and more accurate all the time. It's coping with noise and accents and language and terminology and that will just continuously improve all the time. Uh, in fact, in some places, uh, speech recognition does actually better than uh, people. It's still not perfect, but it's, get, it's, it's really getting there. And we are continuously looking, as I've talked about a bit, about ways to get more and more data that will help with this. Gathering data and labeling it can be an incredible time sink, not just to the company producing the speech recognition system, but to the people providing the data, the way we get it labeled. Um, it, it can be a, a, a tough way to step up accuracy. So we're looking at lots of ways of continuing up this path without needing um, some of those huge overheads and needing professional services to achieve that. So. Um, kind of watch the space in the industry. There's some really cool things coming along that will really help with that. Um, and uh, the accuracy will continue to improve. Uh, but it probably will not ever get to the point where you don't need to edit anything if you want it to be absolutely perfect for you. There was a question here about uh, someone who's interested to understand how we're dealing with speech to text where, are, where more than one person is speaking at a time. This is a, a real challenge. Um, I mean, how many conference calls have, have you been in where there's over talk and you can't understand what people are saying because there's two people speaking at the same time so you end up asking them to repeat it like that's <laughs> that's what, what happens obviously if it's a machine meeting things it can't do that um by far the best way to deal with this is to keep the speakers separate for as long as possible so if you can use a channel per speaker so a microphone per speaker and transcribe all the channels separately and reassemble it it's by far the best way if you really want to get accurate transcription with that over talk um, 
Speechmatic software can do this for you. If you put all of those audio into one single file with a speaker per channel, uh, we can transcribe them separately, piece it back together, and return to you as one big transcript. Um, and that's the best way to solve um, overtalk. We can provide uh, solutions that indicate speaker changes um, on a single channel audio, but as soon as there's overtalk, that rapidly becomes impossible for anybody to do um, uh, a good job of that. So you have to try and avoid that in the, in the first place if you want to. So there is a question here, which I'm gonna paraphrase because it's quite long. Um, it's asking about how we tune speech recognition to different scenarios and coping with you know, eight kilohertz telephony in a call center and the specific domain grammar and improving all, all of that, that system. Um, so this is the place where Speechmatics perhaps take an approach that's different from, uh, from others, where we train on an incredibly wide set of data sources, data types, speaker types, domains, accents, and spend a lot of time using um, some of our um, very clever core technology as well as um, some people to um, balance that data and make sure it has a good balance and supports a really, really wide set of use cases um, and speaker types and frequencies. So our model works really well, whether it's eight kilohertz or 16 kilohertz, single speaker, multi-speaker, different accents. We don't, for example, optimize our technology for a specific microphone or telephone equipment provider. We make sure that the data we train on covers a wide enough range to make sure that it should be best. The way we operate really, as we would say, we'd encourage people to try our system with their hardware and um, you know, come talk to us about how we might be able to improve it if it's not good enough out of the box um, after that um, initial try. Um, I guess really the only piece of advice I would say is try and provide the audio to the speech recognition system in as raw a format as possible. So um, exactly as it's come out of the recording equipment, the better. So um, don't try and compress the audio into some horrific speech, uh, uh, audio codec. Try and use uh, um, uh, lossless uh, compression. And uh, don't try and do things like um, uh, process noise from the file to remove it. Um, because even if a audio sounds like it's got better for a human, it doesn't necessarily sound better to the computer. <laughs> the computer is, is more likely to recognize it in its raw form than if you um, try and uh, edit it and play around with it. Uh, so there's a question just around uh, whether speech practice provides sentiment analysis. Um, right now we don't. Um, some of those partners that we talked about take the speech metrics um, output and um, assess sentiment from the transcript um, along with some other technology they might use themselves as well to, uh, to provide that technology. But we don't at this point provide sentiment analysis directly ourselves. Okay, so question here about um, the ability to scale up to serve large archives, are there any plans for large volume cost metric that's the, uh, dramatically lower? Um, it says right now, vast digitization of videotape libraries is happening without transcription because it's far too expensive. Uh, does Speechmatics have any plans for this area of media operations? Uh, so one of the things that Speechmatics enables you to do, which may or may not help, um, uh, but I hope it would, is take the compute to the data. So you can use our technology um, in your own premises, on your own compute, um, in your own clouds, um, which removes the need for um, both egress and ingress costs of moving data around, uh, also removes the, any costs that a provider of the technology would add for running and operating the, the system. So you can operate the solution on the compute you want, at the speed you want, where you want, um, yourself and manage that cost and speed at the scale you need yourself, which quite often can reduce the overall um, cost. Um, that's the only thing I could suggest as an answer to that right now. Okay, so there's a question here about whether Speechmatics can integrate into all CRMs. Speechmatics is a provider of speech recognition technology that is a technology that can be integrated into anything. Somebody has to do the integration though. Speechmatics do not provide any of the integrations uh, directly. Um, some of the partners I talked about here and others take our recognition and provide integration into those solutions. Um, so if you want integration into a CRM, you would either have to do the integration with our APIs um, yourself, 
or use an integrator or buy a solution from one of our partners who integrates into the CRMs that you are um, uh, wanting to use. Okay, looks like that's most of the questions that have um, come through. Um, if any more come through after um, presentation's finished, we'll do our best to answer them and to get answers back to you. Um, so thank you very much for attending. I hope you've enjoyed the session. Uh, the recording of this will be available in a couple of days' time. And uh, like I said, I will uh, endeavour to answer any questions that didn't get answered during the session um, after the event as well. So thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.